The origin of so many useful things is somewhat muddy. It's in everything from bricks to tiles to dinnerware. Clay is a component of soil that when wet has a certain plasticity. This allows it to be shaped into hundreds of things, including the kitchen sink. There are many shades of clay. The whitest is the purest and used to manufacture things like dinnerware, sinks and tiles. Clay isn't just dirt, it's one of the most valuable resources we have. Here they excavate topsoil and gravel to find it. They dig as far down as 24 meters. The deeper they go, the whiter the clay. Fresh from the earth, the moisture content of the clay is between 15 and 22 percent. The particles of clay clump together, but they can easily be broken up. The clay will now be processed to a workable form. They unload it in a building without walls, so it will partially air dry. They do a visual inspection of the colour and consistency. Every few loads they also do a chemical analysis of the mineral content. And this allows them to categorise the clay for specific purposes. Next, they transfer the clay to a revolving tub. The tub has knives that protrude up into it. As it spins, the knives hit the lumps of clay to chop them into smaller pieces. These smaller clay chunks flow out of the chopper and are moved to a hopper. The hopper feeds the clay to a mill. En route to the mill, the clay travels through heat, a flame generated by a furnace below. This is called flash drying and it brings the moisture content down to 1-2%, to the right consistency to now grind it into a fine powder. The grinding mill is a shaft with numerous hammers sandwiched between steel plates. As the shaft turns, the hammers swing to grind the clay lumps into a powder. The mill will also blend different kinds of clay to create specific products. The cover is closed and the mill is set in motion. The hammers pulverize the different clays into a powder. Overhead, a machine sucks up the ground clay using spinning blades and a vacuum. The cyclone effect lifts up the clay particles and leaves heavier impurities like sand behind. The result is a purer clay blend. Here are various clays, now dried, pulverized and purified. They run numerous tests on the clay. For this one, the technician presses the clay powder into a cake-like disc using a hydraulic press. At the same time weighing it. Weight can indicate the clay's pliability and the speed at which it can be cast. He fires the clay disc in an oven overnight and examines the colour to confirm that it's the correct hue. Over at the packaging station, a worker hangs open bags on spouts, which fill the bags full of dry powdered clay. The end user will add water and other ingredients to turn this particular blend into a glaze for items such as tiles and sinks. In powdered form, the clay is lighter and cheaper to ship. Some customers prefer wet processed clay, even though it's heavier. For that, they add water and chemicals to make it into a slurry. They pump the slurry through a sieve to screen out impurities. The slurry then flows into big mixing tanks, where it remains in a constant state of agitation. Continuous mixing keeps it fluid. Without it, the clay would thicken. On the day of delivery, they pump it into tankers, and then the clay is on its way. This particular batch will be used to make sinks. It's a versatile natural product that we couldn't do without. It's in your vase, your mugs, and your favourite, clay pigeons of course. There's mud in your eye.